I've had this 4x4 keypad sitting around for a couple of years now, and it's time I did something with it. Basically, it's just a matrix of switches. Let's look at how we can read this on the Pico 2. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. I bought this matrix as a module, but you could easily design your own and fabricate using our sponsor, PCBWay. I've recently done a deep dive tutorial on switches on the channel, and reading this matrix is nearly as easy as reading a switch, so I thought it would be a good make and fun little project to show. Let me tell you all about it. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope of course to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. I've had this matrix um, sitting around on the desk for quite some time actually. So it's good to actually have a look at this and actually get it working. So how is all this connected up? Well, the switch is actually connected up using rows. So, um, and there are four rows connections coming out of um, the matrix unit. And then there are four columns. And basically the switches connect the rows to the column. And so there are, of course, 16 of those switches all connecting each row to each column. And so when a switch is pressed, it's going to connect R1 to C1. Or if, if, if for the sw first switch, for the second column switch, it will connect R1 to C2 and so on. So how can actually we read this switch? How can we do this um, for um, our Pico? Well, let's just connect it up as we did for reading a switch in the last video that I did on switches where I basically just pulled one side of the switch to ground and then the other side of the switch will connect up to our GPIO pads as input and then I can use an interrupt to do it. Now that would certainly work and in fact I could easily detect each of the uh, columns from that, that um, by doing this. Now of course I can't tell the difference between which of the switches in a column has been pressed I just know that it was column a switch in column one, a switch in column two, a switch in column three or, or four. Um, but that's half the story. So if I can do that, at least I can get somewhere through it. So what I actually need to do is instead of connecting those rows to ground, I'll connect those to other GPIO ports. So I'm going to go six to, uh, to nine. And I can initially set them to, to, to low. So we're back into that same process of, okay, the interrupt fires, and I know which column that was. So here, if I've hit that uh, third uh, switch down, I, I know that I'm in column two. Okay, great. So how do I work out which of the switches that was in column two? Well, I can simply go through my rows, take the uh, level from low to high on each of those rows and say, well, actually, has that affected the value that I'm getting out of C2? And uh, when I actually find the right one, then actually I know exactly which switch it is. So that's the process that we're going to do. And we're just going to put that into a little bit of code running off an interrupt driver. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. A keypad like this might be a nice little PCB design project, in which case you need a partner like PCBWay to help you fabricate the PCB. PCBWay engineers check out the PCB design and fabricate them into a high quality PCB, which we can then use to build our projects. Using PCBWay's website, we can select options of color and material for our PCBs and follow along the fabrication process. You might even find example projects for similar keypads on the PCBWay's community project site. Trust PCBWay to build your next project PCB. All the code I'm going to talk about here is on my GitHub repo. Um, this GitHub repo does contain quite a lot of projects and examples within it, and it's the Switch 4x4 matrix one that you want to look at. 
Now I've connected this up to GPIO at six to nine for rows and 10 to 13 for columns. You will notice that my connection on the rows is not quite in the most obvious order, but that seems to be the way that the um, device is actually configured the one I've got. So uh, that's the way I've um, connected it. Standard IO in the example that I'm using here is over UART0 and I've reported UART0 to be on GP16 and 17 because that's convenient for me. You might need to change that for your environment. So in the repo, let's have a look at this switch 4x4 matrix example. And let's drive straight into main. So what main's gonna do is it's gonna set up um, a, a switch. Um, a switch which four by four and we're going to give it the rows and the column pin numbers that I'm using. The rows are, as we've just seen, a slightly odd order, but that seems to be the order that they want to work with this device. So fair, fair play if that's the, the way it's going to be. Um, I am setting up an LED here and I am going to flash an LED in the background, but uh, not going to particularly worry about uh, talking you through that. So what's going on in our loop is we are going to continuously ask our switch, have you actually got any presses available? And if you have got a press available, we're going to actually get which switch has been pressed. And then I'm going to print out what that switch number is. Actually, I'm going to look up that switch uh, into a, um, an array in order to convert it to a character, as if I'm uh, typing from a character key code. So um, that's actually this lookup up here. And as you can see, it's um, basically uh, the, you've, it's a numeric keypad with the uh, far right column. The fourth column across is just gonna have A, B, C, and D on it. Um, everything else is gonna be basically as it would be on a numeric keypad. So we're gonna keep basically printing out what, what I've typed. Um, so we should probably have a look at the switch then. So what does switch 4x4 do? Well, we've already just seen the construction. We know that's taking the columns and rows. Uh, we know that there is an uh, is available function and we know that there is a read in function to actually read the value of the switch. Like I did in the previous uh, video, there's going to be bounce protection because we can still have bounces on these switches and we're using the similar uh, strategy of having a static and uh, non-static callback function. So the static uh, callback function is going through finding where the single instance of this switch 4x4 is and, uh, and passing it down to the GPIO callback. There are limitations. Obviously, this will only work if you've got a single 4x4 uh, matrix, though I can't imagine you why you'd have more than one necessarily in a project, but it, it will only work on a single one and it only works if it's the only thing that's reading GPIO interrupts. If you want to do other things, then you need to adapt this a bit. Uh, we've got, we're storing the GPIO pads we're using, and I've got a queue here, which is uh, where I'm going to store the presses that, that I, uh, I detect. So in the setup of the class itself, um, the constructors basically can only store um, all of the column and row numbers, and then it's going to set them up. So it will set up all of the rows as sources. So basically they're all gonna be outputs and they're gonna be initially uh, low. And then it's gonna set up all of the input, uh, the columns as inputs, and it's going to set up our interrupt callback routine from all of them to say, if you've got a falling edge, uh, this is the interrupt to call. So what we're going to do is uh, the function is available. It's basically going to check our queue to see if there's anything in it. If there isn't anything in it, then, you know, nothing's available. The read in function is basically just going to get the first item off of the queue. That's it. And uh, the bounce function is identical to what I've done in the previous video on talking about switches. Um, just trying to make sure that you can only push a switch every 200 milliseconds. If it's faster than that, that it will ignore it. And that will just uh, remove any bouncing. So the callback functions basically just redirect into one uh, member function. 
and the member function here is going to is where really the clever stuff is going to go on so first of all we're we're going to do a bit of bounce protection if it we're bouncing we're not going to do anything um, at this point we we know which column has been pressed but we don't know which row now to detect which row I need to be a little bit careful because if I start playing with the row lines which is what I'm just about to do and I've still got my um, uh, interrupt enabled I'm actually going to start getting uh, further calls into the interrupt and calling into the interrupt when I'm already in the interrupt is probably a really dangerous thing to do and it's going to end up with me crashing the uh, microcontroller so let's not do that let's first of all turn off the interrupt so I'm just going to turn that uh, interrupt off just for the column that we've actually identified the one the uh, for that GPIO pad concern with this column that we actually got the sensor and detection on and then I'm going to basically go through each of the uh, rows and I'm going to keep and um, turn the uh, uh, value for that row so the output from uh, low to high and then I'm going to see well actually has that made any difference to the um, the column that I am that I'm on if it has then we know we've we found it um, and I can put it back down and I can actually push my uh, uh, a well I can calculate which switch number it is and that's that little bit of um, uh, mass there and then I can push that value onto my queue so that's um, and uh, after both cases it's important that I return the uh, GPIO line for that row back to uh, low because if not I won't be able to detect another push on the same um, key or any key within that row and then finally now that we've done it all we can return the uh, interrupt to be on and that's it that's all you need to do in order to actually read these um, keypads and be able to have a nice uh, uh, keypad input so let's have a look at that as a demo right so I'm going to go through and push each of the switches in turn here and we will see the results come up on my screen there of the key that's actually being pressed and I think I've lined these two videos up to actually be running perfectly in parallel but there you go we can see all of the keys this little keypad could be useful to control a user interface or enter a pin security challenge code on the IoT device. I'm sure I can find lots of uses for it in my projects. How would you use it in your projects? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And of course, I want to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button. It encourages me. And please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.